Hi, Andrew Pitt viewers. I'm Loie. And I'm Chris. And it's the season of giving, so you might be getting a new smartphone for Christmas. <laughs> for you. For me. Thanks. You're welcome. One of the greatest things about getting a smartphone for Christmas is that you've got a new toy to play with all over the season of giving, but one of the bad things is that your battery life is never quite up to snuff. So today we're going to show you a whole bunch of tips and tricks, really simple stuff to help prolong your battery life as long as possible. Okay, so the first thing you need to know is there's generally two kinds of batteries in smartphones at the moment. They're both lithium ion batteries, but one is lithium ion, the other is a lithium polymer. Uh, the lithium ion battery will be in Motorola's, Samsung's and Sony devices. It's cheaper. Uh, none of the battery types have a memory, so you don't need to prime them. Um, but the lithium ion has a higher energy density and less self-discharge. Lithium polymer, on the other, on the other hand, uh, you'll get in LGs, you'll get in HTC One and the Nexus Five. Um, it's not as energy dense, um, but it's also thinner and lighter, but it costs more money to produce. As I said, both battery types don't have a memory, so you don't have to worry about fully discharging and fully recharging them all the time. Basically, the more you charge them, the better. Uh, both battery types suffer from low voltage, so if you let them get really, really low, that's actually bad for your phone. So whenever you're near a power source, plug it in, charge it up. Just keep topping it up all the time. Obviously, then you won't notice your battery drain as much anyway. Overheating when you're charging is a massive problem, so always make sure that it's in a cool area. Don't stick it on top of a hot refrigerator, leave it in a car. You've all heard the stories of phones exploding and batteries, so be careful. Make sure you charge your phone properly. Um, but to get to some quick tips and tricks on how to maximize the battery life of your new smartphone, Lloyd, do you want to go first? Why, yes. Um, I have a Galaxy S4 here, so there's different things you can do. It has an AMOLED screen, so a good tip is to have a darker screen, uh, home screen wallpaper that'll save the battery in that it doesn't use so much to produce light on your screen. That's one tip that you can do. You can also set your apps on your phone if you have an AMOLED screen to a darker theme. Yes. Um, you can also go into the settings and make sure you haven't clicked on the auto button for the brightness because that'll just regulate it. It's um, On its own, it's always best to have it at a point where it's comfortable to see. Another tip is making sure that you don't have vibrate on because vibrate uses a lot of your battery as well. And finally, you can also uh, disable the haptic feedback. All the vibration of your phone when it rings actually uses more battery power than it takes to actually ring your phone. A um, Couple of other things you can do, of course, if you do have a phone that has replaceable batteries, make sure you always use manufacturer batteries or respected third-party battery uh, manufacturers that you know have a good reputation. A um, few other things you can do is set your screen time out as to as short a possible time as is comfortable for you. Maybe 15 seconds is a bit too quick, 30 seconds is much better, but if you've got it set to something like a minute, obviously you're churning through your battery a lot uh, more frequently. On a Samsung device, that would be the blocking mode that you can set. Um, the blocking mode is not available on all smart on all Samsung devices, but it is definitely something that if you have it, you should use it. So in the middle of the night, you don't get any notifications and that sort of thing. Yeah, and quite a lot. There's apps available for this, and different custom ROMs have settings as well for setting sleep sleep times for your Wi-Fi and that kind of thing. Um, another thing that you could do with Samsung devices, especially the Galaxy S3 and the S4, is there's a lot of smart features. They actually use up a lot of battery and also nothing else. They just have the battery. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, those are something that you want to disable. I mean, do you really need eye tracking? Do you really need smart scroll? Do you need every, all these little features on a daily basis? Unless you really like them. If you're not using them, disable them. And you can do that easily in the settings as well. And the same goes for your GPS, your Bluetooth, your NFC, your Wi-Fi. If, if you don't need these things on at the time, turn them off. There's plenty of widgets you can get to have quick toggles uh, or you can do it through your quick settings. Um, another thing you can do is just try to turn your phone screen on less. The average person apparently uh, it turns their phone on 150 times a day. There's plenty of apps available. I'm a big fan of dynamic notifications, which is borrowed from the Moto X. Um, basically, it'll display all of your notifications on your lock screen, and there's plenty of those apps available as well. Get rid of lots of the widgets. 
So a Samsung device will come with a ton of widgets right on your phone when you get it out of the box. Just get rid of those. Those are going to use up lots of battery as well because they're always updating and it uses up battery and it uses up lots of your internal storage as well. Yeah, and obviously keep your apps updated. There's a reason developers provide updates. Usually there's optimizations for memory and battery use. Um, on Samsung devices, you have a power saving mode as well, which you can usually um, turn on in the notification bar. There's a toggle for it. So I would su suggest turning it on because it does conserve battery life quite a bit. Yeah, and depending on the user interface uh, that you've got on your device, there's going to be a different kind of version for that. I have Cyanogen Mod 11 on my Nexus 5. Um, there's a whole bunch of different features on that ROM that let you customize the way the battery is used. Obviously, Samsung has a different one, stock Android another one, so they're all over the place. Yeah, and you can also go into your Google account settings as well to stop the constant syncing. If you just want to manually sync uh, certain accounts, maybe you're at work and you're on email all day, so you don't really need to get your email push notifications sent to your phone because that's pinging the Wi-Fi towers all the time. Um, so you can go into your Google account settings and change the sync settings for each of the Google accounts associated on your phone. Um, this is going to help not only your battery, but it preserve internal storage, as well as if you're on a mobile data plan, it's going to use less of your mobile data yep. on average. Exactly. And the same thing for a lot of your apps as well. Um, having push notifications going to your phone all the time is going to use a lot more battery life than if you manually uh, update. So when you open the app, it checks for any new messages or whatever the case may be. Um, so those are really good tips, I think, Chris. There are. Yeah. Some great ones. Hopefully you enjoyed them. Yeah, like me and you. Okay, guys, so hopefully those tips will keep your Samsung, your Nexus, whatever device you may have, uh, running as long as you possibly can have it running. If we've missed anything, be sure to let us know in the comments and share your battery saving tips with us and our readers. And you can check us out at AndroidPit.com. We also have a Facebook page, a Google Plus page, and a Twitter page. So check us out.